if you'd have put <laughs> some fluid in on the Friday when I, um, when I suggested it, um, you would have made it back. you probably just want to hear the story I'm gonna get into it I promise I'm not gonna drag this video out too long but long story short everything's fine that the car is fine nothing catastrophic to report but, but yeah it did break down hello one and all welcome to scene through class after nearly eight years of owning my Ferrari 360 Modena gave me my first roadside issue about a month or so ago I'm gonna I'm gonna explain everything before we do that I need to pull over and explain well, where I am how I got here and, and I guess how the car got here. But yeah, look, as I say, don't worry. Everything's fine. There's no problem. So for you regular viewers, the last time you would have seen me, I was still down in the south of France. I ended up staying down there for about a month with my wife Vicky and our baby daughter. We were there to spend some quality time together because I ended up traveling way too much at the start of the year and I just, yeah, I just needed some family time. And whilst that was the focus, I did still get to have some pretty cool car experiences and make some videos for all of you. So I hope you enjoyed the Bugatti Veyron video, the Aston Martin V12 Speedster experience, and my time behind the wheel of the SLS Black Series and CLK DTM. If you missed any of those videos, go back and check them out. But we all came back here to the UK about 10 days ago. I had a number of projects I was working on and I had to update you all on the 360 because the last time you would have seen this car it was attending the Gathering Supercars event in Portugal and actually it was on the drive back to the UK from Porto that this car had its issue. Now don't forget that event in Portugal marked the end of another epic adventure in this car, the adventure to Morocco, which we thought was going to be quite testing on the 360, but it actually turned out to be fairly straightforward. If you remember, we made a number of changes to the car, uh, sort of reinforced the floor, raised the ride height, changed the engine oil, added some extra cooling, none of which, well, it really felt like we needed, and the car was behaving absolutely perfectly. So I was like, well, there you go, just another, another notch on this car's belt because it has been to so many amazing places and has now covered nearly 56,000 miles. 30 odd of those done with me behind the wheel. 30,000 of those miles, by the way. I should clarify, not just 30. Uh, but yeah, I had no, no real concerns as I set off from Porto for London to take this car home. Where I was then gonna swap it over for the Range Rover Sport, which I was taking down to the south of France. But then, <laughs> about, eight hours outside of Portugal. I was already well into Spain and I just stopped for fuel. I was peeling off for the service station to get a few snacks, just have a bit of a, a break. And I went to, to downshift to come down through the gears. And I went for the clutch pedal and my foot essentially went through the floor. As in, there was no resistance or weight to the clutch pedal. Now the clutch in my car is pretty light at the best of times, but it was immediately a very abnormal feeling. And I was like, oh gosh. So I tried a, a few more times just to depress the clutch and I was like, no, that doesn't feel right. And I was able to just cruise in neutral or, or what's it called, roll in neutral into the service station. So I immediately text orders from AV Engineering going, I think we have a problem. <laughs> now, it's important to note this was Sunday afternoon the bank holiday weekend in the UK. But Orders being the legend that he is and knowing the adventure that I'd just been on, got back to me pretty damn quickly. Orders' first suggestion was actually to check the brake and clutch fluid reservoir because a few days before, we'd had this kind of flickering warning light on the dash, which was actually to do with the brakes. Now, this car's actually running aftermarket brake pads. When you do that, you have to disconnect the 360's kind of brake monitoring system. You just earth the cable, but if that then gets disconnected or de-earths, it throws up a warning light. And that's what we suspected had happened because it literally flickered for like 10 minutes and then it went off and I never saw it again. But I just thought maybe that was like trying to warn us about low fluid levels. So I popped inside the service station, picked up some fluid, topped it up, 
yeah, still, still no luck. The clutch was dead. And all just like, no, you gotta, you gotta really pump it. Like pump it good for like 10, 15 minutes. I kept trying, nothing was happening. So he said, well, really the next step would be to, to bleed the clutch. Can you get to a garage? Is there a local garage? And I was like, it's Sunday, 4 p.m. in Spain, and I'm on the side of the motorway in a service station. I was like, I don't think so. Uh, so he said, well, look, at that point, I'm not really sure what we can do without having the car here or, or, or looking at the car ourselves. So I began the recovery process. Now, thank God I was at a service station. It was unbelievable luck because, well, really, I was in a super comfortable setup. I had food, I had drink, I had somewhere to sit down and somewhere to call for help. Now the only issue is, I really don't speak Spanish. <laughs> Luckily, of course, there was an international call center so I could speak somebody in English. But by the time they'd identified a nearby recovery truck and the driver called me, I, I had no idea what he was saying and he had no idea what I was saying. But he turned up, I would say, within an hour and a half, I think. It all felt pretty quick and pretty easy. Luckily, because of my adventures to Morocco and some of our advanced thinking, I had tow hooks on front and back of this car. So it meant that we could easily get the car onto the tow truck with the ignition running so that everything was moving around and pumping as it should. Sometimes if you move these cars without the engine on, the, the power steering fluid can kind of get a bit, anyway, boring anecdote. And so yeah, the guy then drove me about 20 minutes uh, to a local garage, which was like super nice. Had a great huge storage warehouse where a few other cars that they'd have to recover were located. It felt super safe and secure. And then the kind of more straightforward part of it was, well, I was like an hour and 40 minutes from Bilbao, which meant that I could get a taxi there, stay in a hotel and fly home the next morning and continue with my adventures, which involved getting the Range Rover Sport from Windrush and driving it down to the south of France, which is why none of you really caught wind of the fact that something had happened. It was all surprisingly seamless and it sounds weird to be like, it was quite a good breakdown, but it was. I was never stranded by the side of the motorway. I didn't have to wait six to eight hours. I was able to get a recovery truck. The place where they were keeping the car was fairly safe and secure. They gave me loads of space to the side. They came to kind of understand that it was a car that I was very passionate and and obsessed with so they were being very cautious with it i mean it was all like really positive the only issue was my car was stuck in spain with no ability to drive it back it, it had to get rescued and that's where thank god double s transport came to the rescue uh, i used them a lot to move my cars around but i never used them internationally so i called up michael from double s and i was like can you help and amazingly had a driver who could go down pick up the car and bring it back on the ferry because if i'd waited for the for the insurance company to do it, it could have taken two to three months to get this car back. Instead, it took two weeks. And yeah, the car was dropped off at AV Engineering for orders to get his eyes on it. So let's head back there now so he can explain exactly what happened. Because as I said, it was nothing catastrophic. I mean, it was catastrophic because I couldn't drive the car home. <laughs> but I believe it was a fairly straightforward fix. Just quickly, before we catch up with Aldous, I want to talk to you about Custodian. Now, you might have heard me talk about Custodian before because I've been using it for like seven or eight months now to manage the 360. Custodian is a free app which makes organizing your automotive life easier than ever before. I think it's got like 20,000 users now and they told me 400 million pounds worth of cars are managed using the Custodian app. That's an insane figure. There's a whole load of benefits I can talk to you about with the app, but essentially my favorite features are the fact that you can digitalize your car's history file. As you can imagine, over the last six or seven years, the history file for the 360 always got pretty thick. I got a lot of paperwork for that car. But the minute I started using Custodian, I could digitalize it all. It's all in one place in my digital garage. Over and above that, I can set myself tasks and reminders. And so as I'm out on an adventure like the one in Morocco, if I notice a squeak behind me or a rattle from the front end, I can just put a little task or reminder into the app so that when I get to see all this, I can say, oh, by the way, I noticed this happen and could you investigate it? Uh, right now, Custodian are getting ready to launch their own marketplace, a community focused marketplace. And above that, they're also looking at an insurance offering so the more information and details you add to your car's history and provenance etc 
well, the better the insurance offer will probably be. Huge thanks to them. They have sponsored this part of the video, which they didn't need to do because I was already using the app and talking to people about it, but they got in touch because they saw me posting about it and tweeting and said, hey, we'd love to sponsor one of the videos. So here you go. Go check them out. There is a link in the description below. Find out a whole load of more on their website, but I highly recommend, as I say, if you want to manage your cars easier than ever before and also check out their upcoming marketplace, go check out Custodian. Anyway, let's go find orders. Right, Aldous is just in a meeting, so I quickly wanted to show you these two cars because he sent me information about them already. First up, this. I'm sure you've all heard of a barn find before. This is a garden find Dino, a car that was left out in the garden for I don't even know how many years. I mean, look at that poor engine bay. Oh my God. I mean, this is a restorer's dream, but this thing needs to be literally ripped apart. I mean, Matt Armstrong, Tavares, is this up your street? I feel like it could be. I've never actually driven a Dino. Super intrigued by them. Obviously, iconic looking cars. Um, but yeah, this one definitely seen better days and needs a lot of help. I'm not sure if the guys are literally going to be doing all the work on it or not. But um, very cool to see. Also, by the way, can we just talk about this? So totally deservedly, AV Engineering won the best Ferrari specialist at the recent London Concours um, event. Uh, and they, this is the trophy they got, which, you know, as I say, long overdue. I mean, they should always have been considered the best Ferrari specialist. And I feel like maybe Aldous has left this here on purpose. Um, but hey, why not? What a great way to display that trophy. So that's amazing. Uh, also amazing is this. Firstly, check out that dashboard. Now, this, of course, is a 360 Spider. I mean, that dashboard is not standard, but anyway, you can see it's manual and it's missing its engine because, wait for it, AV Engineering are going to be transforming this car into a Challenge Stradale Spider with a manual gearbox. Yes, you have. <laughs> here this will be a manual challenge for Dali spider now the fry factory never made a manual challenge for Dali or a challenge for Dali spider but we are soon going to see this thing come to life an absolutely huge project the engine is out because they are literally rebuilding it to challenge for Dali spec all the other changes that need to take place that dashboard obviously will come out um, I think you can see there's some work already done to the front fenders maybe I'm not sure but this is a huge huge project and will be amazing to see and I've said it before and I'd say it again every time I come here I get distracted by the amazing stuff knocking around and AV Engineering are doing some amazing projects like this one and it just every now and again makes me think maybe maybe it is actually time to bid farewell to my car if i could do something like create a manual story like basically take my car maybe i should just challenge to convert my car like i don't know i oh it's all just a bit tempting this is such a cool project it gets me really excited and really distracts me but anyway let's get back to my car my beloved car and get all this in once he's finished this call to yeah talk through exactly what went wrong where do you where do you start diagnosing an issue like that? Well, so with any issue, the first thing to do is confirm the customer complaint. Okay. Which was very easy because we, we had no clutch pedal whatsoever. Um, so very easy to confirm that. Um, there's a number of things that can cause that, but the most common thing is a fluid leak. So um, the first thing to do is check on the side of the gearbox. There's a block called the um, clutch block that frequently frequently splits and you can lose your pedal from, uh, from that. Um, you can actually see that just by looking down in here. So that was as soon as it came off the transporter, we just looked down there and uh, that was all intact and dry. So the next place to look is actually in the bell housing itself. So up on the lift, under tray off, there's a little access um, panel that you take off and you can see the sort of at the edge of the clutch and the flywheel and the release bearing and in there it was soaking wet. So. There's your smoking gun. There's your smoking um, so gun. The, uh, it was the release bearing, or the seals in the release bearing. The release bearing itself was okay. Um, there's the seals that... Um, Which are what, rub rubber seals? Yeah, well, we've got, I've actually got your part uh, up here. So this is the release bearing. Um, when you put your foot on the clutch, oh, sorry, it runs, sorry, it runs on this flange, so I'll change this flange as well. So it runs on this flange. When you put your foot on the clutch, it pumps um, actually brake fluid or fluid into here and then pushes this forward onto the clutch cover plate and opens the, uh, opens the clutch. Um, it's got these seals in here, so three seals um, for the large diameter part and then three for here. And it was just leaking out, you can see how what a mess it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just every time you put your foot on the clutch, just a small amount of fluid came out. Okay, um, so that flickering light we had yes. and the suspicion that you thought On it Friday. might... Friday. <laughs> so that was what it was. That it, yes, so that it, was... What, the car was warning me. So that we in were. the um, 
So the brake fluid reservoir is also the clutch fluid reservoir as well. They're separated and they're done in such a way that if you do run out of clutch fluid, it doesn't affect the brake at all. But there is a level sensor in that reservoir and what happened is the clutch fluid had started to drain out a bit and then the, the float was triggering the light. Uh. Um, if you'd have put <laughs> some fluid in on the Friday when I um, when I suggested it, um, you would have made it back. Yeah, well, then, I, I, we I left just... that bit out of my story because <laughs> yeah. obviously we initially thought it was to do with the with the sort of monitoring cable, didn't we? Because of the yeah, pad so that, that, that light is two two functions: it's brake fluid level and uh, pad wear. So if the and on your pads because we've got the upgraded carbon pads. Um, we don't have wear um, sensors on there, so if that had come adrift and it was just touching the chassis, then it would have caused the light to go um, to go on. Which I was like, that's probably what it is. You went, but it could be the yes. fluid. It's yes. worth topping up, and I went, Absolutely. ah, topping up, schmopping a whole this. So that was Friday, um, yeah. and then Sunday afternoon. Um, <laughs> there was an entire event on Saturday. There. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's my fault, basically. No, no, it's <laughs> not your fault. I mean, it's a it's a common thing. Um, so, we, I mean, so common we carry this stuff in stock and we change so many of them. Um, it's a good, it's good practice to change the actual release bearing once this happens. You can't just get the seals individually, but what's happened is the um, brake fluid has come out and it's washed all the grease out of, this is an actual bearing itself, it turns. It's washed the grease out of here, so this bearing's no good at all. Um, the, uh, the flange that it runs on, this has got a hard chrome plating and I don't know if you can see it in the camera here, but it's actually picked up and lost some of its plating. So this is scrap, this is no good at all. Okay. Um, both of these are remade by Hill Engineering. So we've got upgraded Hill Engineering parts in, nice. your, in your car. Now you said it was like a tiny little leak, but obviously when I picked up, when I left for the trip, you'd just see the car, you'd just done all the modifications to it. So it's something that happened throughout my trip. Yes. I mean, I did cover a lot of miles. So. Yes, you did a lot of miles. I imagine you pressed the clutch pedal quite a few times. Quite a few times, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So, um, even so though it was a small just, leak, yeah. It's, and it's, and then the, the reservoir itself is not that big. So, even though it was only coming out a little bit at a time, the clutch felt absolutely fine. It was dry when we, when we prepped the car. So, obviously, part of prepping the car was to make sure that everything was, um, was um, A-OK -okay on it. Um, and one of the things we do every time we have the car on the lift is have a look in the bell housing because you can leak from the release bearing, and you can also leak from the engine as well and if you don't catch it then obviously you can have failure but if you don't catch a, um, a rear main seal leak you can toast the clutch up and stuff like that so fine. it's always checked so it was absolutely fine when you um, made it and if you were a typical Ferrari owner only doing a handful of thousands of miles in a year we would have caught it at the next service um, and we would have, it would have been fine, but you know, he likes to use your car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, it's just, just, it's just, it. In it's yeah. just one of those things. Um, unfortunately, thankfully, it made the trip all the bits that you wanted to do, and it was just on the um, on the return leg. Well, that's so. why I said, if there's ever such thing as a good breakdown in a Ferrari, <laughs> I had a very good breakdown. And yeah, huge thanks to Les Transport for the rest of the car, but also you for being, as I say, uh, so good on, on WhatsApp and really trying to help me in that situation, and warning me about the issue that I clearly just ignored and was like, nah, he doesn't know what he's talking about. It will be the pad monitoring system. Um, but no, look, and anyway, as I mentioned, the car, the car's great once again. We've taken everything off, right? All the yes. Morocco mods are gone. So all the mods from Morocco are gone, um, back down to um, factory ride height. The, uh, the only mods we haven't done is the tyres. Yes, um, yes, so still running the sort of the desert tyres, yeah. Probably to, um, to supply those, but everything else has been put back to normal. Um, done a couple of other things whilst the gearbox was off, changed the gearbox um, support bush because that was worn. Um, a couple of ball joints at the front and a track rod end on the steering rack. Um, Reset all the suspension geometry, so it's uh, okay. It's, 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 it's in great shape, and I don't want to shock you now, but basically, before whilst you were on that call, I was talking about the the, the spider, the Stradali spider project. Oh yes, at, the, um, yeah. In the background, and the fact that every time I come here, you distract me with lovely cars, and. I'm going to say this car's now in great shape for its next buyer when I get a Spider Stradale. <laughs> well, it's next owner, I should say. I mean, I, I, I'm half joking. But uh, yeah, car's back in its absolute glory spec. So ready for whatever its next adventure will be when I promise, I promise to listen to your advice. And if I get a warning light, actually do something about it rather than being an idiot and driving on. So there we have it. That's what happened to my car. I'm sorry that I sort of, well, didn't tell you what was going on at the time. I basically wanted to wait until orders had analysed the problem so that I could, you know, paint the full picture. 
rather than dragging it out over two or three videos, you know, that doesn't tend to always be my style. I do have to give one other sort of shout out though in this whole process because I was helped by an incredible local in Spain called Victor, who basically provided translation services, but also logistical services, let me know, you know, where the garage was located, if there was a better garage. Just, he was just a fantastic guy. So Victor, thank you very much. Uh, I felt, well, much more sort of secure and safe as to what was happening with my car with your help. And yeah, I'm leaving it there now at Ava Engineering because as I mentioned, I'm back off to the south of France to do some adventures with the GT3. The guys are gonna keep an eye on it for another couple of weeks before I get back in the summer. And I'm sure I'll take the 360 out uh, yeah, Ju July, August, maybe take it down to Goodwood Festival Speed, who knows? But subscribe now, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of the future adventures with that car or the GT3, but not the F-Type. This is probably gonna be one of my last drives in this car. As I mentioned before, the F-Type is gonna be going. More on all of those plans soon enough. Bye-bye.